Hi, this is Brad with Copper Creek Cuts, a lawn care company in Northeast Florida. I recently had a request to do a video on business structures when it comes to setting up your business, so we're going to talk briefly about that. A few disclaimers first. This should just be considered guidelines or rules of thumb. Nothing I say should be taken as gospel because I don't know your personal circumstances, I don't know what state you live in, so I can't speak to what's best for you. Keep that in mind. The other thing is that in this I will be sharing my own opinions, but I'll make it clear. Otherwise, it should be taken as a fact that I've researched from sba.gov or irs.gov. The last thing to keep in mind is that when we're talking about this discussion, we're only talking about the legal entity of your company as far as your state and liability is concerned. That means we're not talking about the taxing of your company. This isn't an, uh, an IRS April 15th tax filing discussion. This is just the legal structure of your company when you set it up and during the course of operation. So with those things out of the way, let's talk about probably the most common businesses that you're going to start up when your business is brand new. There are partnerships, which we aren't going to talk about. There are corporations that we're not going to talk about. Because in my opinion, nine times out of ten, if somebody's just starting out a business, it's going to be a sole proprietor or a limited liability company. When we talk about sole proprietor, you're also going to see it referred to as a doing business as or a DBA. You may also, depending on your state's terminology, see it referred to as a fictitious name or a fictitious name registration. Uh, LLC is always going to be limited liability company. That's really the only way to refer to it. When we look at one of the first benefits, one of the main benefits that a sole proprietor has is that it's cheaper to set up. Again, this depends on your state, but for me, in Florida, it costs me $50 to register my fictitious name or my doing business as for five years. With an LLC, it costs $125 for the first year, and then pretty much that same amount every year plus years. Okay, that, that really doesn't make sense, but I can't talk and write at the same time. The point is, the LLC over five years is going to be more expensive to maintain and require more paperwork. So does that mean this is the choice for you? Eh, not so fast. The real advantage and the real difference in LLC and sole proprietorship is in the liability, the responsibility that you're going to have as an individual. With a sole proprietor, Copper Creek Cuts and Brad Bear were the same thing. So everything that Copper Creek Cuts does or everything that I do under the name or under the operations of Copper Creek Cuts falls back on me personally. With a limited liability company, everything that Copper Creek Cuts does is Copper Creek Cuts responsibility. Even when I, Brad Bear, am acting personally on behalf of Copper Creek Cuts, that responsibility still falls under that limited liability company. What does that mean? Well, let's just make up a story. Let's say that I make a really boneheaded decision and, you know, at the local taco place, I have three margaritas at lunch one day while I'm working, and then I go right back out and start mowing somebody's lawn. Through some kind of freak accident, whether I run over somebody or hit them with somebody, something, let's just say because I'm inebriated, I make a bad choice and I paralyze somebody or maim a kid or something truly, truly horrible. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to get brought up before a judge and jury, and that judge is going to award uh, compensatory damages to make up for what I've done, and he's also going to probably award punitive damages or damages that punish me because of how negligent I was in drinking alcohol and then running heavy equipment. And just to clarify too, you can find yourself in this situation for any number of reasons, not just drinking and operating machinery. I didn't want you to kind of tune out if you said, oh, well, I'm never going to drink and do that. Maybe your mechanic told you and documented that your axle on the trailer was bent and unsafe to drive on, but you did it anyways, and you caused an accident that killed, you know, a family of five in a minivan. There's any number of things that could happen that don't have to involve something crazy like drinking alcohol for you to be in a real big pickle. So let's just, and we're making up numbers here. Don't focus on the numbers. It's the concept that we're trying to get across. Let's say that he issues a $3 million judgment against Copper Creek Cuts against Brad Bear for my actions. So we've got a $3 million judgment. I have general liability insurance. 
If they pay out, which they may not because I was being completely negligent, I've got a $2 million policy. We'll just say for the sake of argument, they do. That leaves $1 million that the plaintiff or the people who were hurt need to get. Now, this is where the big difference comes in. With a sole proprietor, Brad Bear is responsible for that money because Copper Creek Cuts and Brad Bear are the same exact thing. So this means that this $1 million gets tied to me. So now I have to sell my house, which is in mine and my wife's name. I have to sell all my vehicles. I have to sell all my work equipment. I have to tap into my 401k and completely liquidate that. This is, this is gonna ruin my life, right? There is no way to recover from something like this. My life, as I know it, and my wife's and my children's is ruined, possibly forever. You know, this is, this is something I'm not going to be able to come back from. The difference, when you look at the $75 or the $125 a year, this is why you should really focus on starting an LLC first, just to cover these kind of things. That, is it likely to happen? No. Could it happen? Yes. And if it ever does, you're not going to be sorry that you went with an LLC. This $1 million now gets tied to the business, right? So Copper Creek Cuts is on the hook for this $1 million. So now I've got to sell Copper Creek Cuts work truck, the trailer, all the equipment I have, any business assets, those are gone to satisfy this $1 million. But at the end of the day, and I can guarantee you I don't have that much, right? Maybe uh, $30,000, $40,000 worth of equipment. At the end of the day, the balance of this is just going to fall to Copper Creek Cuts, and it will not come back on me. This is the benefit of the LLC. So Copper Creek Cuts, that company is done after this judgment. There's no recovering. But I don't lose my house. I don't you know, ruin the future of my family because it's my responsibility. It's just the company's. That's going to be the biggest advantage of the LLC. Now, there are catches or stipulations. You do have to make sure that you keep everything separate with an LLC. What does that mean? Well, if you're going out to dinner with your family, you cannot pay for it with the company's credit card. If you're going on a cruise or a vacation, you cannot pay for it with the company's credit card. You can't pay your mortgage payment from your business account. If you do those kind of things, what can happen is a lawyer can pierce the corporate veil. That's the terminology, piercing the corporate veil. And what that means is that he is essentially proving to the judge that, look, Brad's saying Copper Creek Cuts is its own company, but I've got proof that Brad and Copper Creek Cuts are the same thing because the business accounts used for household items and household items are being spent on business expenses. That's one thing you don't have to worry about with a sole proprietorship. You don't have to have separate accounts. You don't have to keep everything strictly separate. It's a good idea to, and I personally, in my opinion, think that you should, but you do not have to. With the LLC, you have to if you want to maintain the protections that are involved in that. So that's kind of the really basic rundown. I tried to keep it under five minutes. I wasn't able to. That's the most basic look at what I feel are the most common structures that you're going to look at getting set up, either the sole proprietor or the LLC. So all that being said, which one should you get? I don't know, and I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> That's something for you to decide. I've got no clue. Uh, based on what we've talked about, I would say the LLC is going to be the better choice. The value that you get for this extra filing fee and the value that you get if you keep your business expenses and your household expenses separate, I mean, that's worth a lot more than $75 to me. Are there instances where you might wanna do this? Maybe, but the most conservative, the safest, the best option, in my opinion, is always gonna be to set it up as an LLC. So I hope that kinda helped. Uh, again, we didn't talk about tax filing. We didn't talk about partnerships or corporations. Those are topics for another day if you're interested. If you have any questions about what we just talked about, leave them in the comments below. I respond to comments almost daily, no matter how old the video is. And if you've got any interest in seeing what my normal videos are more like, you can view a product demonstration there or a grass cutting video here. But in either case, please consider subscribing and make sure you click that notification bell. If you don't do both of those things, YouTube won't let you know when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it.